What's up, y'all? So I have an urgent message that I believe the Lord wants me to share. And this is for all of my college students who are going back to school right now, who are moving back in, getting ready to start this new semester. Before you go, make sure you keep your mind focused on these three things that I'm about to name. The face, the grace, and the pace of God. So we know that college is a very high stress environment. We all like to talk about how fun it is and how great of opportunity it is to go to college. Yes, this is very true. But we also have to acknowledge the fact that the college environment is a breeding ground for stress, for bad decisions, for mistakes, for depression, for anxiety. Come on, let's talk about it. Because it's not all peaches and cream. Okay, and those of you who have been in college for a few years, y'all already know how the ball game goes. I was in school for six years, three different schools, and I know the type of things that you have to face in that college environment, especially when you're having fun. So let's talk about this. The face, the face of God. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all else will be added unto you. So you need to make sure that you are keeping your mind, your heart and your body set first on the things of the Lord. Remind yourself of what his word says. Keep yourself in God's presence. Dwell in his goodness and his greatness and not on the things that are around you. There will be so many distractions that you will face in college. It will be so easy to get drawn left when you should be going right. You should be going straight towards the path of righteousness, straight, straight towards God. And it's so hard to keep that because everything in college is encouraging you to do things that you probably wouldn't do at home to do things that you probably wouldn't do if you were not even in college. So, Let's just keep ourselves reminded of our morals, of our values, and what God wants us to do. Because he has these things laid out for us for a reason. It's to protect us. So when you step out of those boundaries of protection, you're bound to experience depression and anxiety and worry and doubt and fear and all of these other things when we don't keep God first. So always think, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? In this situation, what would Jesus do? Imagine him looking at you every second of the day. Would God approve of this? That will help you not to make those mistakes, right? And I'm doing it not because I don't want to be cool or not because I don't want to go out and have fun, but because I know what's best for me and my spirit. You got to protect your spirit, man. And the way you do that is by first keeping your face on God, keeping your eyes on the face of God. Okay, And I also want to add that keeping your eyes on the face of God and keeping God first also includes going to God first, not waiting until later after we go try to figure it out ourselves or go try to solve our own problems or try to vent to other people. We go to God. We run straight to him because he is our source. He is our answer. So remember that putting God first is not just doing what he would say first, but going to his presence first. Number two, the grace of God. Now with the first one in mind, we all know that you're going to make mistakes. God even knows that you're going to make mistakes. We've all made mistakes. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Do not condemn yourself for the mistakes that you've made. Don't allow the enemy to come in your mind and distract you with the lies of condemnation because the Bible says those who are in Christ Jesus are not condemned. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. He did not come to the world to condemn it, but to save it. So we have to remember that and don't let those mistakes keep you out of the face of God, because that is what the enemy wants to do. He wants to keep you separated from God. God's grace through the work that Jesus Christ did on the cross is enough to bring you back to his presence every single time. God loves you so much and he sees you when you make mistakes, but he wants you to come back to him with a repenting heart and a broken spirit and knowing that you need him. Ask him for forgiveness and you are renewed. You are redeemed. Christ has already paid the price for your sin. So don't let your mistakes hold you back from God. Keep moving right. Keep moving towards God. Okay. Number three, the pace of God. And this is so important. For some reason, the world has us thinking that we are in a rush to do everything. You do not have to rush to the finish line. You do not have to rush to do what God has called you to do. His plan is perfect 
and it's going to happen in his timing. And your job is to trust in God and to believe that his plan is already laid out for you. So if they say you need to have another semester because you need to take some more classes, don't be like, uh-uh, I can't do that. That ain't, mm -mm, I need to graduate. I need to get up out of here. Graduate and do what? Where you going? You got a plan? Hmm? We be rushing for no reason. Why are we in a rush when God is not? Why are we pushing for something when God is saying, slow down, relax, dwell on me, Re rest in me. Let me handle the plan. You just follow through with it. So you need to be so close to God that you can know when and how and where he wants you to go. And that way you're not going to be distressed about what's next. You're not going to be distressed about a class not being taken on time. It's okay. You're not moving at your own pace. You're moving at God's pace. Okay. And that is what's so beautiful about being a child of God. And so if you have not accepted Christ into your heart, which he is the only way to the father, the Bible says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. Those are the words of Jesus Christ. And if you have not accepted Christ into your heart, confessed it with your mouth that he is Lord and that he was raised from the dead for your sins, then I encourage you and implore you to go ahead and make that decision. This is the best decision you can ever make, especially in this college environment because you're going to need somebody to lift you up when you down. You're going to need somebody to turn to when nobody else is around. You're going to need that grace to pick you back up and let you know that it's okay. I still love you. When the world don't like you no more, when you make a mistake and the college environment ostracizes you, you're going to need somebody to turn to. Okay. You're going to need that life. You need that redemption from your sins, from the mistakes that you make. You're going to need redemption from that. Otherwise, you're going to fall short every time and condemn yourself more and more and more. And I just want to implore everybody who is already a child of God, who's already accepted Jesus Christ, continue moving towards him. Continue to make yourself more like Christ because that's how you're going to get through. That was the best decision that I've ever made. And I'm sad that I waited until after college to really, really get into it because I struggled, y'all. I almost lost my life numerous times in college in many different ways. But the Lord and his grace and his mercy spared me. He saved me. All of that pain and that, that, that struggle and that strife that you're going to go through, you don't have to do it by yourself. You're not going to have to walk around with heavy burdens on your back. Because you got God, because he is first in your life. And when he is first, he will give us a peace that surpasses all understanding. When we come to him and let our anxieties out on him, he will return us peace because he cares for us. He will sustain us. He will carry our burdens. If you need to keep scriptures on your wall, keep them on your wall. If you need to keep it in your phone, keep it in your phone. I implore you to do so. Stay in church. Stay around good people. Your community is who you become. You hanging around bad folks, you're going to become bad. I love you guys. And I just really pray that you guys receive this message. I pray that it was delivered effectively in a way that you can understand it. And that all ears who heard this received it so that you can carry it throughout the rest of your school year and keep your eyes on him and just make sure everything that you're doing is aligned with God's will. That is the entire goal in our life. And that's how you're going to make sure you're on that path to full peace, to love, to joy, to patience, to kindness, to faithfulness, to gentleness, to goodness, and all of the fruits of the spirit, a sound mind. Because let's remember, the Lord did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. Th those are the things that I pray for over you for this school semester.